Welcome everyone up to session 19. Let's get on with it. Ooh, it's a nice chilly morning at the moment. It is uh, it's Friday morning, so I decided to get these. Let's get those legs moving. Decided to uh, yeah, get these videos done a little bit earlier. Um, I've been a little bit slack the, uh, I think somewhere in the middle of, of all these, maybe like number 11, 12, 13. I was getting them done like two days before, but we're on point now. We're always going to get better. <laughs> Switch over those legs, get into a nice little glute stretch. I'm hoping everyone has enjoyed their week. Um, yeah, we're getting through this little lockdown stage there. Hopefully everyone's doing a little bit of exercise, keeping themselves warm. And I think I like I was mentioning now some previous ones there, all my uh, all my firewood's pretty much gone now, so uh, we're doing the whole proper jumper on there and rug up and throw a nice blanket over us and watching a bit of telly. That's always nice. Good, switch over legs and I think we're uh, breaking all our records with the just sheer volume of tea we're having at night time, which has been nice. Um, I've been experimenting with, uh, what is it? It's a turmeric and I think it's turmeric and cinnamon. Like it's got some decent spice to it. It's, uh, yeah, it's nice. I've been um, having a pot, maybe even two of those at night time there. Don't get me wrong, sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night to go to the toilet, but hey, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> Being well hydrated is never a bad thing. Good, stretch out, but who wants to be woke up in the middle of the night? I get it, I know, I know. Good, stretch your glutes, but uh, I thought I'm gonna be woken up by something to go to the toilet, it's really not such a bad thing. All right, go into quadricep stretch. Give that a good pull up. And thank you very much, a few people have left some really cool feedback saying they're enjoying some of the dumbbell work, which is great. And I want to incorporate and just add a little bit of sort of um, lower mid and upper back sort of work into today's session. Um, it's good to acknowledge that when you want to strengthen up your back, it isn't always about strengthening the lower back. For the majority of people, it's not that their actual lower back is really, really weak, it's that all the other surrounding muscle groups are really not doing their job properly, and that's what's causing lower back to get a little bit extra fatigue, and, and then all sort of start talking to you by telling you it's a bit upset. Um, that's sort of how I explain it to a trainer. Um, when you notice your lower back's feeling tired and sore, it's normally that it's saying, hey, I've been doing too much work. Um, can, can, can I have a break? Can someone else start to take a bit of the, uh, the load and do a bit there? So example, glutes and your hamstring can help out and depend on your body posture and what your hips are doing. These things can all help there. So we'll talk a little bit about that for today's session. Uh, yeah, a little bit of extra back work is nice. Oh, good to stretch those quads. Like hamstring stretch, kind of talking on it. Um, and you would have, um, I think everyone here watching this would have enjoyed uh, what, uh, what my wife Amy had got to do a couple of, couple of days ago there. So being a kindergarten teacher there and doing some of the stuff remotely, um, we decided that we would go for a bit of a walk outside and just sort of explore nature and, you know, film the, we've got some little um, creeks that run through our area there. So we're going to jump away. Sorry, my uh, Bluetooth piece seems to get me out. Um, and yeah, we were just walking around there filming some stuff there, and then we saw a magpie just chilling out doing its thing in the morning, and then flew off to its little nest area there, and we filmed that, and you know, helped the kids sort of explore, you know, these are magpies, and you know, they'll put their nests up over here to keep like the predators, all that little bit of talk, and um, yeah, just really nice to, Yes, yeah, so to just walk around outside, it was lightly spitting, there was just no one around there, it's just nice to, like anything, it's just nice to be outside, and I really like what Amy's doing when she's teaching the children to get through the stretch, and, you know, definitely, if I reflect upon it there, if you see a sort of rainy day outside, you tend to say, oh, no, it's, it's not a nice day, I want to stay inside and be warm, but I really like how she's educating the kids that whether it's raining or sunny, it's always a great day, it's always exciting, there's always something fun to do, and getting outside and even if you are to get a little bit wet, like it, it, it's okay, especially for young children. It's like if we can if we can show them that every day is special and every day is good, then that's a that's a good helpful skill to teach them. So Trevor and um you know not even just for children, for us, right? Like we can learn it's a bit different. I'll be the first to say sometimes I see some rainy weather and it doesn't make me jump up and down if I want to take the dogs for a walk and it's a bit rainy out there. They don't care, they just want to go up and sniff, right? They're just, they're just so excited to get out there and it's normally us who stop them from doing that. And yeah, I like it. I like where she's, uh, where she's helping the children sort of explore some of those things. Good tabletop stretch, sit over the top. 
Good, wiggle the hips around. Nice and stretch out, especially if lower back's a little bit tight. This is one of your go-to ones. And this is all about lengthening the spine. Good, so sit in, give it a bit of a wiggle around. You can go straight legs or slightly bent, whatever feels comfortable for you. Just get into that position. All right, so we're gonna start off with some standing movements, loosen up our hips up a little bit more, and then we'll get straight to some waist reps up. But firstly, quick trip for everyone. Gum water today, I've already had my uh, coffee this morning, I'll definitely have a nice pot of tea this afternoon. And most likely tonight, let's be honest. <laughs> All right, as a side, just get everything moving. So I like a nice little shake, Go. Just shaking out the calves. That's right, shaking out the ankles. Just gets it all moving. Hands. Alright, let's get ourselves into a marching movement. Nice and simple. Good. If you've got some dumbbells and handy available with you, please grab hold of them. Otherwise, take the dumbbells away if you don't have them. You can substitute it with some household goods. My suggestion is sort of some canned goods, they can work really nicely. Force you to use your grip strength a little bit more, so dumbbells are a little bit smaller inside so they're a bit easier to grip where you can you go sort of get your hands around a little bit more so you've got to do a little bit more forearm gripping that's okay just adds a different dynamic but work with what you got if you don't have anything just body weight stuff that's cool but remember we can change this up the higher we drive our legs the harder it becomes good work team get it up nice and high right three two one Good, let's take ourselves a seat. Just your shirt slide a little, we're going to start with some shoulder pressing. Hands out to the side, pressing above the head. Good. You go with your movement. Notice I'm not using the back rest. If you want to reach to the side, so I'm going to show you facing on. If you want to reach out to the side, if you didn't have any dumbbells, that is time to do. You can definitely even do it if you have dumbbells. So that's cool. So, we're still shoulder pressing. Bring it up together. Good, you could reach. So change that movement. So again, if you didn't have any dumbbells and you want to create a bit of a reach, it just allows you to lengthen. You're moving your body just a little bit to the side so you have to lengthen out through your obliques and a bit of your back muscle groups called your lat. Go through that there. Good, keep going team. Remember, just because I'm not doing it doesn't mean you have to stop. You can definitely keep going. Two, one more. <laughs> Excellent, just pop these dumbbells down to the side for a little bit. We're going to come back to them. I'm going to show them, I believe we've done this plenty of times in previous ones. We've done rolling movements. So nice wide stance. Coming out in front, pulling back in there. Control out in front, squeeze your bum, pull back in. What I like about this is not only do we get to use our legs a little bit in this movement, allows us to come forward, squeeze it with our bum, pulls ourselves back, but we also get the upper part of our body, our upper back muscle grips, having to work. If I want to strengthen my lower back, Sometimes I need to take note of what all those other surrounding muscle groups are doing, my glute, my hamstring, my upper back, my obliques, which run down through the side of my body. All those muscle groups play their role there, so it's good to get them all working together. You can also change this up a little bit. You could slow down the speed. You can not bring yourself as far forward, or you can really make them a bit more difficult by creating a bit of a higher pull. So this one's a little bit tougher. My suggestion is you keep your head nice and straight, as you're creating that high pull movement. Oh wow, this uh, Bluetooth piece is not one to stay in today. There we go. Wedged it in, wedged it in. Might have to wear like a beanie or something to keep it on the head. <laughs> All right, two more. One more. Excellent, oh yeah. Good, jump up, give it a bit of a shake. So sometimes like a little bit of a wiggle. Move side to side. You should notice a little bit more of that mid part of your back, up part of your back is that pulling face, so that is excellent. Lovely, transition into another back exercise. Good, with one dumbbell, we've done this once or twice before. If you've done a lot of our group classes, you'd know that we do this exercise quite a fair bit, which is called a one arm row. So, put my left knee on top of the chair, my right hand on top there, heels on the floor, slight bend in my legs. From here, I just want to pull that dumbbell up towards my hip or towards my pocket, control it back down. The other, the other visual is it's like I'm trying to elbow someone behind me. It's that pullback movement here. This allows me to get my back muscle groups working. I'm going to show it just on, a, on the other angle. Um, 
You can swap sides as well. <laughs> that was the word I was looking for. I was trying to think of the words wrong hand, my hands are out. Good. Keeping your heels down, we'll do two rounds of it. So from here, pull my shoulders back, drive my elbow up behind my body. Good, I've got my right hand and right knee on the chair. My left heel's on the floor, my knees are slightly bent. I'm pulling this weight up by my side. Good, three, two, one more. Good, swap sides. Good, so I can set my two around and just give me a feel for it. Excellent, back into it again, team. God, just a nice strong pull up. And this is really getting a lot of our back muscle groups having to work. Our latissimus dorsi, which is our big strong back muscle. This one's doing the hard work, followed by the front of our arm, followed by the back of our shoulder. Two, one more. Excellent, switch sides. Cool, go for it. And you don't definitely have to move the chairs around, obviously that's what I'm doing. <laughs> just so you can see my views, you can just walk to the other side of the chair and, and go ahead for it. One more. Excellent. So that's some back work there. So we're going to give that back just a little bit of a break for now. Taking a seat down. Good. We're going to do some lateral raises. So let's bring it out to the side. Oh, let me see if a bit better. There we go. Bring it out to the side. Good. Slight bent in elbow. Oh, wow. I'm not having a good day with this piece. Stay. Sometimes you've got to tell it. Stay. <laughs> Alright, out to the side. There we go. Whew. Good. Four. Three. Two. One more. Good. Now this one's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to notice I'm going to come a little bit forward. I'm going to show you straight on, then I'll show you laterally. I'm going to come a little bit forward and then pull it back behind me. So this is a way that we can get some upper back muscle groups having to work. With the key is leaning slightly forward. So, chest up nice and tall, slightly forward, then working up the back. Here we go, team. We got this. Good, strong pulls up off the back. Four, three, two, one more. Nice work, rotate around. Hey, doing great here team. Let's pop this up of our feet so we're gonna get a little bit of quad hip flex. A really cool thing about quad hip flexor work is they help stabilize that hip. So we make that, that hip, so all the, the hip structure, the bone structure, all the muscle groups that connect into it, struggle to get that stable, the less tension our lower back's under, and that's always a good thing. If we wanna build lower back strength up as well as decrease the amount of load it's under, that is a winning situation. Good, so get some weight lifts. Doing again, the tough part is you've got to really curl your toe under, otherwise if you point your toe, that dumbbell will run right off. Cool, let's get some weight lifts. Good, stay there. There we go. Good, now last one before I drink is we're going to do a leg extension on this one here. So extend both legs out. Good, so I'm sitting real far back in the chair. I've extended both my legs out, you need to point your toes. Work with this here. Do you want to make it just a little bit harder? Slightly bend them down. So they just touch the floor for a split second. Extend the back out. It's a little bit of control over your ankles as well. Because that weight wants to fall off sometimes. You've got to control it going through it. You get a nice fair bit of load on the quads. Let's see if we can do this for a full 30 seconds. It's going to be a little bit tough. Depends on what you've got on Twitter. If you've got canned goods, oh wow, if you're able to get the canned goods on there, superstar. I've seen some people get creative, use lacquer bands. <laughs> hey, you're at home, get creative. You just what you got around. I mean, you could probably do a towel, I don't know. Yeah, wedge it in, tie a towel, and you could do anything, right? I trust you, we can find a way. And you can always make it a little bit harder by just doing what I'm doing. You can pull it in underneath your chair. Means you're going to pull your legs up to get to that point. Otherwise, your legs will generally strike the floor depending on the, um, the height of your chair legs. Ooh, three seconds. Two. Last one. One. And 
that stuff we finished. Also, brush period. It's day four. That's a pretty good indicator. All right. Whew. Shake those legs. Oh, good to loosen. Always find so nice to get those legs all fired up. Mm. Ah, very good. Good, you might want to do some stress period, just get a little bit of torso rotation and get a little bit of length in being that tabletop stretch before we move into a little bit of tougher lower back exercises. So one being in particular deadlift, and what I like about the deadlift, the humble deadlift, is it's a very um, technical movement pattern that from as, as, as of birth and, and when we're really young, we execute it perfectly. And a great example is watch a child who goes to the wall up off the floor and you'll notice that they will slightly bend their legs or they'll stiff leg, but they'll fall right over the top. I'll show a Bentley position, they'll pick the ball up and then you'll see they'll do that movement pattern there. They it'll execute perfect every single time. And you can see fundamentally that we're designed really nicely to do a deadlift movement. I'm going to show you a simple variation with it done, but we're going to keep it a little bit safer because you don't need to be getting yourself on the floor to execute that movement. But know that we're all capable of doing it. It's just a matter of practicing and taking our time and understanding that it is a thrust of pelvis. It's a push of your hip to lock out forward. Okay, oh, before we do this, we did our rotation and just some lengthening. So I always like lengthening, which is good old tabletop stretch. With that hip around, you probably notice that you've got a little bit more movement in today, uh, sorry, in now compared to 15 minutes ago when we first got into this stretch. You'll probably notice you, you can just move it up a little bit more as so everything's just a bit more warmer. Ah, feels nice. Ah, that's good. Okay, so deadlift. This is how we're going to do it. Whatever you've got for weight, you can keep by your side. If you don't have any weight, you definitely don't need any weight to execute it. I'm going to show you front on. I'm going to suggest that you wait until at least I show you laterally before you execute it the first time. So just watch me here. Feet lined up, weight sits along the top of my body. I want to just be mindful about just pulling my shoulders down and back. So I don't want to be up nice and tight, down and back. I want to bend my knees ever so slightly. And what I want to do is as I stick my bum back, I want to let that weight just go along the front of my legs, just past my knee. So I pull it up, I squeeze my bum and I come forward. I want to show it one more time straight on, and then show it to the side. Then I'd suggest you have a go at it. Squeeze my bum, stand up tall. Good. Slide up legs. Control, control, control. Bum goes back. Bum goes back. Squeeze my bum. Stand up tall. Control, control. Just over the top of my knees. Squeeze my bum, stand up tall. Notice that the weight's always very close to my leg. It never comes away from my leg. Always very close. Good. Practice with it, please, team. Control, bum back. Squeeze your bum, stand up tall. Notice I'm really thrusting that pulse. I'm really trying to stand up tall with a bit of power. And that's really important to just engage and ensure that my glute is doing some of this hard work. So this is a glute hamstring exercise. But, third, uh, but the third muscle group in charge of what we call the tertiary muscle group is all your lower back extenders. So they're working quite hard to help stabilize and finish that exercise off there. Good, continue working with it. Control, 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 switch your bum, stand up tall. Control, 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 squeeze your bum, stand up tall. Good, pop that weight down. Shake your legs out, move yourself around. We're gonna have another go at that one. And this is a nice little fun one. And sure enough, if you said, Hey, I want to do a little bit of lower back training every now and again there. I'd suggest jump back and then I think it's what we say, program card number 19. Just make a mental note of it, then come back to it then. You can always revisit this. Maybe four or five weeks down the track, I might do another session that has a little bit more lower back work into it. But in the meantime, you're always welcome to come back to this. I think, you know, hopefully if this goes to the end of the year, which uh, the truth is I think it will, <laughs> just, just with what's happening on, um, in Victoria and stuff. You're going to have a whole bunch of different videos that you can always go back and search through there. And I think that's an excellent thing. Good. So, great on to the council for helping out with that. Side drop the legs, head up nice and tall. Control myself forward. Squeeze my bump, stand up top. Come on, let's do it together. Control. Squeeze your bump, stand up tall. Come on, let's get three more. Stand up tall. Notice I'm not flopping forward too. Notice I'm keeping the top half of my body nice and straight. I'm not flopping. This is 
keeping what we call integrity, and so then thrusting my hip forward. So you just take your time as you go through it. So what I tell people is it's really good to watch it a couple of times. Talk yourself through it, watch how I'm doing it, and notice the bend in the knees, and notice the bum going back, notice the top half of the body coming forward, but not flopping forward, it's always straight and controlled. And then the last final thrust of the glute. One more, and then you practice it yourself. You can always pause this video and just go about it at your own pace. That's what's wonderful about it. Videos at times. Well done team, pop those dumbbells down, shake your legs out. You may notice some tension moving in your bum. I know it's generally a little bit of tension through my hamstrings, the back of the thighs through here. They can get a little bit tight, depends, uh, so they can get a little bit loaded. So I notice that I've been working them. Um, it depends on where your strengths and weaknesses are on your legs, so that's all very normal. Uh, just shake out your legs there. Notice that we do a hamstring stretch at the end there. That stuff is always wonderful. Good to shake it out. Good to shake it out. So our next one is we're going to do a seated bent over reverse fly. So I'll show you what that looks like, and this is training a little bit more about the upper back muscle groups. And this will be our last back exercise here. Sometimes it's really good to get into doing some back training, but not making sure or ensuring that it's not the whole session. Otherwise, it can be a little bit too loaded, um, a little bit too much load for everyone. So it's good just to have a bit of variety and play with it. Good to notice where my legs are, they're quite far in front of me. Up nice and tall, squeeze my bum, slightly lean forward, let the weight sit in on either side of my leg. I just want to bring myself just a little bit more forward now, let those weights come in underneath, pull them up behind me. Control underneath, pull them back behind me. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying not to swing, so this would be a sweet movement. We don't want to swing, we want to keep ourselves over the top. Pull out with my arms. Good, it actually comes down to the middle part of my back. So the part of my back is you pull in my shoulder blades together and pull that back behind me. It's actually my upper back that executes that movement. If you get a little bit of shoulder fatigue, that's really normal. So just giving that good pull back. If I focus on trying to squeeze my upper back together, there's a really good visual. Let's do two more together. Get over the top, squeeze bum. One, last one. Two, awesome. All right, well, let's finish off with some high intensity. Get our heart rate up a little bit more. Get those legs working. Good, pump with the arms. Good, if we can get those knees up a little bit higher, that'll be even better. Excellent work, team. Wonderful. Good. Nice boy, think small and fast, think small and fast. Let's see if we can keep this going for two minutes, right? This is going to be a little bit challenging. You take your time, if you need to have a little bit of rest, that is fine. Good. Let's go for a little bit of a stomp here, so I'm working on just striking that floor a little bit harder, a little bit of impact, we're all warmed up now. Not a problem at all. Good. Two. One. Good. Toe impact. So just striking a little bit more on my toes. Good. If I want to, I can really get that up nice and high. I still control how I impact that floor. I strike as hard or as little as I want. So I can bring my legs up high, but notice how I'm soft impacting, it sounds a bit different to further and harder impact. You control the team. Good, let's go for it. Smaller yet. Small and strong slams. One more minute here, right? Gonna get a hover up. You may even notice your arms get a little bit sore, especially if you've got some dumbbells in your hands. Good, legs up higher. Stay with me, team. This will get our heart racing. We'll feel alive and awake. Challenge anything that the day throws out. Small. Go. Go. Again, you work with impact. Small, hard, whatever you want. Legs up high, legs up high. Yes. Good. Next one, legs up right around the Good. Keep them life interesting. 30 seconds. Small. Go. Large. Get them up high. Get them up high. Small. Team, we got this. Small. 20 seconds. Keep them small. Keep them small. And bring them up high. Last 15. Last 15. Bring them up. Whatever you've got, team. Go for it. Three, two, one. Yes, there we go. Oh, God.
right. Great work. Get yourself some water. Have a little walk around. Ah, feels good to move those legs. Now we spawn. I think Friday is a good routine for me to get these videos out for you. Most part, I've had a little bit of a relaxing morning. Don't know for anyone, uh, or um, if you're watching, but the NBA basketball playoffs are on at the moment, and uh, I'd definitely be a basketball fan there. So, you know, waking up early in the morning, the first game's on at 8.30, so I get to watch a game from like 8.30 to 10 o'clock. It's just, it's magical. It's wonderful. In COVID times there, so just trying to, uh, yes, yeah, so find some fun in this there. So just have a bit of a feeling up the back muscle groups may be a little bit loaded. I can tell mine are a little bit tight. It's awesome, it's good, it's a great sesh. Let's get into some stretching. Not oh, cross those legs up. Let's get into a good stretch there. Feels good to stretch the glutes. Oh yeah, it's tight. And well done again team, right? Still showing up, getting these sessions done there. I'm hoping everyone's still really finds some good content from you know types of exercises to uh, try to educate a little bit throughout and what it's all about there and you know sort of understanding that lower back just because lower back's tight and sore doesn't necessarily mean it's weak that's actually yeah it can be a little bit of a fallacy it can be it can be that it's actually getting overworked and that everything else around it is is what's actually weak so it's acknowledging that it's about strengthening everything else than it is just about tending to and strengthening lower back um, sometimes it's a hip position issue so you see a chiro, physio, osteo, they may say that your hips are a little bit imbalanced or that you're not getting the proper, what we call it, a posterior pelvis tilt, so the pelvis isn't tucking in properly. A whole bunch of different little fun things there. I don't sound like big, crazy words, but all it is is just defining that if we tend to those issues, then your lower back will actually feel a lot better. Um, and everyone's different, right? The, the unfortunate thing is there's no one size fits all because it depends on any injuries or anything that's happened in throughout your life. Um, I really feel for people who've had like, car accidents, a whiplash, and that type of stuff that throws the spine and the neck yeah. area out. That stuff's really, yeah, it's not fun. Um, I think I've worked with one or two people with some like neck whiplash issues, uh, and, and it's uncomfortable, right? You can just see a lot of exercises need to be significantly changed or just a no-go zone. Um, so you have to really get a little creative in how you sort of build a training program to help them out. Um, but obviously, if anyone's got that situation, you should be definitely seeing a physio. A chiro osteo, uh, yeah, osteopath, or someone who you find is professional, who understands to jump legs, who understands what's going on there and can tend to it for you because, yeah, it's not fun. Not the most enjoyable one. But hey, we all got something. And then a couple of screws loose upstairs. It's okay. It's absolutely fine. <laughs> one day I'll find those screws and tighten them up, but until then, they'll stay loose. <laughs> they will stay loose. You know, it has Ah, a bit of laughter in these times. Yeah, you can never go wrong with it. All right, get the stretching up. And yeah, you just can hear, but uh, I'm just up over here. If you ever seen me look up here, it's because that's our staircase there. And sometimes one of the dogs just pops her head out through there and has a bit of a look around. And yeah, she's funny. She just wants to see what's happening. Or sometimes I'll both sit up there and have a little bit of a snooze because they can look down and sort of see me. As long as they can hear me and see me, they're fine. If we close the door up there, sometimes I'll park a bit, so... Yeah, you know, you might be able to repeat. Can you stretch to the other side? Good, just sitting over the top. Good, shaky out there. And really important too, I hope that no one skips this part of the session there. It's just as important as the warm-up as the training session there. They all have their roles. It's the reason why you teach a warm-up and a, and a cool-down or some sort of a stretching on both ends of the program. Um, just because it's all required just to ensure that the muscle groups are getting tended to. If you want to work it out a little bit strength-wise, just lengthen all the muscle fibres, everything will feel so very much better at the end of it, and nothing gets too tight. Oh yeah. Except if you haven't done enough of it, oh yeah, it's a bit tight. I actually find too, and I was saying to Amy before, they're doing some calf stretching and, and some just different stretching, um, uh, calf uh, before um, or while and during watching the basketballs, it should be really good. Well, sit down with Natalia for an hour, an hour and a half, I can actually give a good stretch, and, yeah, that feels quite nice. Just, um, you know, use your time wisely. I always find hacking you get a bit creative with your time and make it all work, and that's one way I can definitely do it. Good, yeah, 
rock and roll. Give it all a good stretch. Good, we got one last one, good tabletop. Just to lengthen out, sit over the top, and then we'll do just a little bit of rotation. I don't mind a little bit of extra rotation as we've done a little bit more on back work. Good, really let that hip swing side to side. You can always feel free to do some extra stretching at the end if there's something else that you feel needs to be stretched out. Highly suggest going through that there. You definitely don't have to just stop because I stop. So if you feel you want to do a bit more, um, explore, have a bit of fun, play with that. That's really lovely. Last one there. Just, I just hold my hands together and just let it flop side to side. If you kept your legs stable and just rotated, that's cool. If you want to let your legs flop a little bit. A little bit it looks a little bit like a golf swing, that golf swing, that internal rotation of the hip. And just let it rotate side to side. Everyone, you have a wonderful Wednesday. I will see you all next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.